Hello and welcome back to the Disc Golf Pro Tour. You are watching the Dynamic Discs Open from Emporia, Kansas and the Emporia Country Club. Round two, lead card coverage from the distant past. We don't even know what happened on the 4th of July yet. <laughs> it's Big Sexy Commentary, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colley. Right out the gate says, you would expect Paul McBeth coming out with a blistering, smoking hot course record, 11 under. Stats right there tell the story. He was just absolutely... Pretty much perfect off the tee, OB free, bogey free, the only bogey free player in the event through the first round. Ricky Vaisaki, after a slightly s slow start, we played together, turned on the Jets in the back nine, finished with a great eight under, and obviously Emerson Keith, he was just as impressive at eight under, and Kevin Jones rearing up the final player on the lead card at seven down. Great fairway hit percentage, circle one percent or circle two putting percentage 40%. at forty. That'll get it done. And just like that, we are on to hole one. It's a par five, twelve hundred twenty-four feet long, long pin position here. Most of the players going to go with big high hyzer as the wind is pretty low today for Emporia. You can swing the disc as high as you would like. Just try to find the center of the fairway. Do that a couple more times. You get down there close enough to try to go for the pin. It'll definitely be interesting to watch as Macbeth starts his second round if he can continue that heat from the first round. And speaking of heat, we have got a hot one today. The temperatures up in the Low 90s, humidity is super high. We had a nice rainstorm the night before, and this grass just in Kansas really holds on to that humidity. Just like that, we have seven of the past eight world championships on the first two players off the box. Just how you'd want it here at this big event in Emporia, Kansas. Ricky just barely missing that tree and uh, getting a huge distance there. As you can see, Macbeth's disc in the distance. Wow. From Argyle, Texas, sponsored by Latitude 64, Emerson Keith. Emerson, a, a really huge thrower, very efficient with his body and able to get 550 feet of distance, really no problem. And he is also going with the hyzer. That is a nice play there. Look how high that thing is, and it's drifting back in the middle of the fairway. That is just picture-perfect shot from Emerson. And one of the things that becomes kind of a, you know, we don't have the wind blowing as much as we did in round one, but uh, another thing to keep in mind as a factor that could play uh, trouble for these guys is grip issues. When it gets that hot, we're just not used to playing in this much heat. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the, the Pro Tour and the Disc Golf National Tour do a good job of is swinging the tour into the best climate zone throughout the season. So we start off, obviously, in late February and March down in the south in Las Vegas and in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And we just kind of swing up until the uh, we get kind of further north as the, the weather gets hotter throughout the year. But we really can't avoid the heat on a day like this. Not not a whole lot to think about on these first two shots on this hole. It's pretty wide. It's later in the hole where you start to have this thing narrow down. Well, I actually disagree. I think the first shot you don't have much to think about. It's the second one you do because it's, it is to a blind landing zone that pinches down. And I think the tricky shot is the third shot. So if you're not far mm -hmm. enough in the first two, that third one does get pretty difficult because you can only see half of the basket. And when you can't see the base of the pin, the, the distance becomes very tricky to read. And so you really want to get a lot behind that second shot like Emerson does here. That's the distance that you, you're, you're going to feel really comfortable bringing a putter into that green. Yeah, for definitely for a big thrower, the second shot starts to pinch as that wall mm -hmm. comes in. And I think agreed, the third shot is the key shot here. You know, assuming you can stay in bounds just because you do have that golf tee area that's out of bounds right before it. And then it slopes down to OB behind the basket. So we'll see Paul... Go with the zone. 
roughly 300 feet maybe here. Yeah, maybe a little less. That's about right. That looks pretty good as it just mm -hmm. creeps over that green that you were just talking about. That'll be right about circle's edge. But you really want to come in with something slow and don't really want to play much skip. A nice putter shot. Emerson's drifting that one a bit right. But a good result. Yeah, he'll definitely have a birdie look from there. Kevin going with more of the high hyzer play. Getting a little skip and scooting outside the edge of the circle. Putting that 40% circle two percentage to the test here on the first hole. And Ricky likely with the pig there. And that skips perfectly. Then those pro pigs really grab the thick, humid grass here in Kansas. Ooh. Kevin really giving that 100% bid. Just a bit off to the left. Paul also off left, and that hit so few chains that that might have kept going maybe 25 feet long or, or so. I don't, couldn't see how far that went. But Emerson picks up the birdie. Nice birdie there. Paul is still away. Yeah, that, that went about 26, 27 feet. Not the putt you want for par on the first one, but he's in. Keeping that bogey-free ratio still clean, that bogey-free card. And Rick is in for his party. Two birdies, two pars for our group and on to hole two. Par four, uphill, 759 feet. The whole golf fairway area there on the left is out of bounds. So you've got that one tree you need to get around. Players mostly do that with a turnover backhand or a big forehand. And then you're going uphill, just these three trees to get past. No real OB on the right side, but it can be windy. Not so bad today, but that's main challenge of this hole, I feel like, mm -hmm. usually, is just navigating past that wind. And Ricky going the forehand play, he's not leaned on this uh, shot as much over the last couple of years, but I feel like at this event, he's really been going back to it. And I really like seeing that from him because he's he's an all-timer. He's one of the guys that you, you mentioned in one of the best forehand list. Emerson also really great forehand. And it's interesting to watch these guys do that off the tee because it just does not quite bite off as much distance. And I think that it's really important to get a long tee shot and that does hit the edge of mm. the grass, and that will take Emerson most likely out of birdie range. But a full shot can get to the green. It's just so much more difficult from back there. <laughs> and we saw Macbeth just throw the clinical drive, slight turnover. It really wasn't a big high Anheuser shot, just smooth turnover. He's doing the same thing here. This just looks so good. Nice. Not a little quite, more turn. Not quite as far as round one, but still in a great position. And Kevin is a guy who has really added a lot to his forehand throwing over this last offseason. Mm -hmm. He's throwing the disc easily over 400 feet. Are we talking about the first offseason or the second offseason? Probably both. Okay. Emerson, really, that's a full rip. He is trying to get to the green in two, which there's really no reason not to try. It's just those trees up there are going to be the, the guardians that are going to stop most shots from getting up there. Mm. Comes up a little short in the trees. That's the nice wide line. You like to see most likely a destroyer skipping up to the pin. 
that's how you do it right there. And every player so far really showing off the versatility, the forehand, backhand. Paul's going to be a bit right. Ooh, but look at this roll. Why? How did that do that? <laughs> what just <laughs> happened there? Oh, that's a good effort. But it'll be a par for Emerson. And Kevin will have this putt from 35 feet for the birdie. And there's a net, there's a cash. That was committed. So he's 50% from circle two so far this round, even better than the first <laughs> round. I still, how, how on earth did Paul's Heiser forehand roll backwards to the pin? I. That is a strange reaction from the disc. I mean, not just that, he's closer than Emerson. He just Ooh, parked it. <laughs> that was a little scary. Paul doesn't seem like the kind of guy to ask questions about how he got there. Just get there. Get to the in. next. Where's the next deep pad? Where's the next birdie? I'm going to go over there. Hole three, par three, 489 feet downhill. We've seen... Paul goes straight at it with the backhand in round one. We've seen some forehand attempts. Simon, even with that roller, a lot of options here. But I think the wide forehand and the straight backhand are probably the most common, especially with uh, the lack of wind. I think these guys are going to be able to feast on this hole a little bit more than maybe usually. Yeah, with the one thing that we did have an advantage in round one was there was a tailwind that was helping the distance. This plays so far. At 489, to go hyzer the whole way, even though you're going downhill, you're still throwing about 450 in power. And Rick just nails that at circle's edge, hyzer the whole way. That is just a lot of power to be able to do that. And we've seen Macbeth go the high, wide forehand before. But he's going to stick with his game plan and go backhand down the middle, turn over. This one's just a bit more turned over than in round one. That's going to come up well short. Kevin leaning on that forehand again. Yeah, another chance to see the power that he's developed. And he is going low, and look at this thing flipping up nicely. This is what you want right here. And that is actually just a little short of Rick's, but. Right up there on the green, though. That just tells me how much power he has to get there. I mean, that is a, that's a shot that you really have to throw here to see just how far this hole plays. Emerson's got a great forehand. I. If this gets there, I mean, that's that's pretty far. Yeah. But, I mean, Emerson's forehand is very technical. He's very accurate with it. I wouldn't call him, like, an elite power forehand player, but he's got enough power to, to potentially get there. But not quite on, on this hole right now. Paul from maybe 90, 100 feet. Wow. Ooh. Giving it a little scare. Very good run. Emerson's still in range, though. He's probably 50 feet, closer to 60, maybe. Oh, oh great effort. Really close. Kevin to go back-to-back -back jumpers and just like that. Picking right up where he left off in round one. He's deadly from right in that range. When he gets on, I've seen rounds where I feel like he just forgot how to do it. And then, then there's rounds like this where he just, he just connects. And I think that's more prevalent. We're used to seeing that go in. Oh, Ricky just a bit off balance perhaps. Comes up a bit short. That's one that we normally see Ricky pick up. So in the end, just one birdie and a couple pars for the rest of the group.
On to hole four, 438 foot par three, a little bit downhill, but kind of coming back up at the green. You see that wall on the right side. That's one of the hardest parts about this shot because you want to put some power behind it, but if you do flatten it up, you're probably going to stay right. And then if you're a little too aggressive with the hyzer, obviously you have the cart path as well there to be a problem for you. If you throw it low though, you can kind of count on the hill to straighten out your skip. And there, the, the wind was blowing it all. It was kind of prevailing left to right, which helps the player from hyzering out over the path left. And that's a great mm. drive from Kevin. Very but, nice. But the problem could be if a player hangs it out too far to the right that it doesn't get back inbounds on the right side. But these guys are going to be going with high speed, overstable drivers that should fight any wind. And like I said, like you said, there really isn't much to speak of in round two. This is a little bit. Whoo, that was close. A little bit of tree help, perhaps, but it sticks inbounds. Paul's not sure if he likes it or not, but the result is going to be fine. 27 feet, maybe a little bit closer. Such great speed on the pull through for Emerson. And this hole is just too easy for these guys. Just everyone in the circle, 438 feet is not far enough. Rick still with a little bit work left. And two consecutive low putts. Nice putt there from Paul for the birdie. Kevin with the turkey right there. Start the round off. Three out of four. And he got a little bit of chain there from that familiar 37 foot. It's only the first time he's actually been on the green in regulation, and yet he's still three down through four holes. Hole five, par four, 681 feet that just keeps getting more narrow as you go. A lot of trees in your way late, but players are just gonna try to get out, if anything, to that right side a little bit to allow you to play a hyzer in. If you go up the middle, you may have to throw more of a low ceiling shot. And just note again how narrow this green is. It's less than the width of the 10 meter circle you got. Not a lot of room to squeeze the disc in there for a birdie attempt. As open as this tee shot feels, it does pinch in OB as you get further up the fairway. But not only that, the landing zone for where you really want to be is actually really small. If you stand right in the middle of the fairway, 400 feet up the fairway, you're, you actually don't really have that many good options. And I think that we might see that from Paul's but not from Kevin. That forehand Kevin threw yeah. is in the garden spot. That's that was, a, that's not only great. was that huge, mm -hmm. but over to that right side, I, I would think that's coming up on 450 feet. You want to be left side or right side. Either one, if, if you want to throw the backhand skip shot approach or the sidearm skip shot approach, you really want to push one of those two sides. 
It's actually kind of a strange thing that a big wide fairway, the one place you really don't want to be is dead center in the middle. Mm. There are options, but it's just not quite as easy. And Rick showing off another power hyzer. And surprising, I, I, he actually went away from his game plan from round one, where he threw backhand, was in a great spot. Maybe just feeling out the wind and the conditions and how he feels on the day, but uh, he's gonna be in that one little tricky zone there. You have to get pretty technical and that's mm -hmm. exactly why. It's just a lot of, the, the ceiling is so low that you, you kind of feel uncomfortable pushing it out over OB, you just can't quite expect that skip to get in every time. You can't rely on it. Yeah, I don't think the skips are really hard to count on out here with mm -hmm. the humidity like you're talking about. It's hard to trust that you're going to get much. And that obviously then forces the player to air the shot to the green, which is so difficult when the limbs are hanging about four feet off the ground and you're going uphill. Yeah. And Kevin will be inside the circle again. A chance to get him to four down through five holes. Paul goes low around all the trees. Perfect shot. Never over out of bounds. Great angle and speed. do it okay bad enough to hit the tree but the roll ob backwards would have just been the worst rick will have an easy par emerson from 75 just gonna lay that up probably a bit of a low ceiling look it's one that you, if it were wide open that's one you, that's kind of fun to run because it's uphill and you don't really have any danger but Oh, Kevin leaving one out left. The two putts we've seen him miss have just caught chains on the left side of the basket. He'll go up there and clean out that par. Paul to take a stroke on the card here. And not quite a stroke on the field, but this was the fourth hardest hole, averaging 4.41. Birdies feel good in this hole, wind or no wind. It is just a, you know, even though there's really only five, maybe six prominent trees in the fairway, they are quite prominent and they do factor in on any approach coming up to the green. Hole six, par three, 351, slightly uphill. You got OB Sand Trap and OB Golf Green, and then the more likely OB is the long left rough grass there just about 30 feet from the basket. So if you come in a little too aggressive, try that ace run, you're probably gonna find yourself OB. And this is, for a second straight day, the easiest hole on the course coming in at a 2.7 average. The biggest difficulty when the wind's blowing is trying not to get your disc to get lifted and blown left out of bounds. In the low wind conditions, these guys are gonna be looking to play field darts. Just throwing high spy kaisers and landing it on the green. I love a good game of field darts. Lawn darts is kind of the game that most people play. I play field darts. It's uh, well, you're a big guy. Lawn isn't going to contain you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Perfect shot. If you weren't here to catch all these misspoken <laughs> <laughs> things that I say. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen? They'd fall through the cracks, and <laughs> and none of us would get to have a a fun chuckle. <laughs> I stand by field darts. <laughs> and Emerson, he's throwing the hyzer in there. Beautiful shot. Most of these guys are probably just going with their. Pretty overstable fairway driver of some sort. 
Rick coming in. Only one left of the pin. He'll probably be away. Ricky was really bothered by the pink flag. Forced him to, he tried a few times from his normal stance, went to the straddle and, oh, wow. and connected. But he was asking, can I move this flag? Yeah. It, it was right in his swing where it, he, he could almost get the putter down and not touch it. But every time we would really load mm. his putt, he had to stop. That's that's unfortunate. That should be addressed. That, that should never be an obstacle. I mean, it's good to have them so you can see for reference. Mm -hmm. But you do not want something that's there to help you to hinder your chances at executing a throw. But he made a great great decision, I think, to straddle mm -hmm. out and, and hit the putt regardless. Showing off the versatility that Ricky is obviously known for with his incredible putting ability. And Emerson with that unique putting style just has really adapted it to be such a consistent putt for him. He is. Yeah, I can't really think of anybody who reaches back like above the hip yeah. over there on the side of the body. It's, it's a different looking stroke. Pretty incredible as the star frame gets another donation to the edge uh, program. Yep. Educational disc golf experience. And hole seven is a par four, 648. As you saw the drone fly through that little tunnel and under that one low branch, those are the main things that the players need to get past to get out here and have any chance at birdie. It is a bit downhill, so if you can throw a nice low, hard thrown shot, you can clear that ditch and make it really easy work on the second shot. But obviously easier said than done, just like every hole preview I ever do. <laughs> yeah, sure. This is oh. moving left. It needs to be a little bit gentle on the ground. Quite overstable. I'm not quite sure what he threw. It is inbounds, though. Mm -hmm. It is palm of death. And this is turned. And Kevin, that needs a lot of help and didn't get it. That will most likely set up another forehand around the back side of the fairway but he may be out of range because that's going to put him back probably around the 370 to 400 foot range, but he will be going uphill with low ceiling and many trees to deal with. It's not where you want to be. Emerson really turning nicely on this one. Shot. Going to come up just a sh bit short of the ditch. And there you see Paul's disc as well. Similar position. Rick's been throwing this destroyer very well lately. Getting it to flip up flat. And he's, he's done it again. Yeah, he smushes this thing, man. This is going to clear the ditch in the air most likely. And past oh, that tree. That, wow. If, if you can see your disc land on this hole, you have just laced it. He's probably 60 or 70 feet past Emerson and Paul there. Yeah, that is a huge advantage. And that puts him in most likely pig forehand territory, which we all know means gonna, that's going to be a birdie. Yeah, Rick. yeah. <laughs> Nimble footwork by <laughs> Kevin, our camera guy, Kevin, dodging Kevin's shot. Well, how about that little connection? They have the shining, perhaps. Just because they have the same name, of course. All people who share the same name <laughs> communicate. Wow. He doesn't sound like he likes it. Well, I mean, you can kind of see why. It doesn't really fade for him. goes a little long. I mean, I don't care that it didn't fade to the pin. That just was so smooth and just like he just striped that gap just perfectly down the center. I mean, I kind of care that it didn't do what he wanted it to do, but it was still impressive to me. Oh, no. Hit the tree, rolled out a little. Not even going to go pig forehand. He's no. too close. It's pretty easy work for Rick. That is such a fantastic drive. A huge advantage. Emerson from about 80 feet. Oh, Ooh. just hyzer around the backside. I love that he's giving any chance that he has a really good effort. You know, just one at some point, one of those is going to fall. 
I mean, can he save his par from 57? Oh my goodness, look at this guy putt. Amazing. It's just Kevin Jones, James Conrad, best slow mez styles. You just love it. Just the full 100% yeah. effort into the putt. Paul from Circle's Edge. Wow. Just child's play. Look at that hand lock in. Doesn't move. Once he released the disc, there's no sway in the hand. It is just picks his point. He hits his mark, holds his pose. I mean, it just shows off why he's so steady. And he takes the lead for our group five under through seven holes. Wow. Yeah, he's past Kevin. But opening up a pretty significant lead on the field. I mean, these guys right here are keeping that distance from Chase Card and from the rest of the cards. All green and gray so far. I mean, four down for Rick, three down from Emerson. These are quality scores. Even though the wind's down, don't sleep on Emporia Country Club. This course is tough from hole one to hole 18. Absolutely. Lots of distance, and we see some of it here. 1,014 foot par five going downhill which almost makes it harder to hit the landing zone, I feel like, because you got all this airspace and your disc is just flying, 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 and you gotta keep, make sure you hit that middle because you come in with too much skip, go OB left. If you get too aggressive, very easy to hang it out and go right and just not get any skip at all out there in the longer grass. Paul trusting the high wide hyzer with the ESP force. Over the cart path, it does. If that hits that cart path, there's no guarantees that that disc stays in bounds. It could really get down to the left OB in a heartbeat. And Ricky looks like he's going with the mid-range. Yeah, he was throwing an 11-time rock here, actually. And this is starting to drift left a little bit, but I think it may just continue going straight. Yeah. Wow, barely safe. Pumps the brakes, and he's in bounds probably 375 to 400 feet up the fairway. I like the forehand play. If Kevin can get this turned over and not skip, yes, that is great execution. If you can throw it far enough to find that uphill, you probably won't skip, but mm -hmm. that's a lot. That's a big ask. Like that's a really long forehand. And it's a huge commitment to go for that shot because if you hyzer her out early, you're in a really bad spot. And Emerson going to go to the forehand tee shot as well. And a lot of times when you see the forehand, you see like the low forehand at this early tree on the left side and try to just bring it under the branches. But these guys are going a different route, trying to just go way down the fairway. And just like that, Emerson shows off that technical forehand ability. He went with a little more of a flex to control and make sure he doesn't go OB right, which I think is smart. Mm -hmm. Gave up a little bit of distance to the group, but not much. And it really isn't so much about the tee shot getting a lot of distance as it is about this second shot. And if you're getting anywhere near these trees, you're going to be set up in a good position to throw that third shot underneath that low ceiling up to the pin. Paul playing the high wide hyzer with the forehand and he'll be up there by those trees as well. Stays in bounds nicely. Still, I mean, he's looking at going the first 27 holes, OB free, bogey free. And 17 under par. Oh yeah, <laughs> that too. Rick going flex. This needs to hurry over to the right. Wow. Oh, wow. That is absolutely huge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> a little scary. Just a bit more turn than Rick was looking for. And one of those wipe the sweat off your brow moments. And there was a lot of sweat on a lot of brows on a day like this, man. It's just <laughs> hot and humid. That's huge. What? He's got nothing left in his way. Ricky, similarly, you know, you almost jump putted under the basket from there. Look at you. You're showing something to Kevin in the background. He loves it. 
I was showing him something. I think I might have been telling him how good his forehand's looking. <laughs> You're looking at your phones. Do you have to? Did you record a video of it? Could have been. <laughs> Just showing him a highlight replay. And I like this play from Emerson. The forehand playing to the hillside to not skip down the hill OB. That's parked for the birdie. Kevin hanging this a bit out to the right, but still pretty close. And Rick lays that up under the basket with the pig. Just chewing up 900 feet in his first two shots with a mid-range and, and a forehand. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, no, no, no. Making an adjustment from an earlier miss left. Too much of an adjustment. And Kevin just seems to do that sometimes. He, he'll make some really great highlight putts and then he'll just miss one that you just know he just wishes you wish he would just take maybe a second more and I don't think that he's rushing himself but just I don't know I don't have the solution obviously but yeah hole nine a par four measuring in at 729 feet talk about brutal with the Kansas winds always switching directions you never know what this hole has to offer with what plays as the toughest tee shot on the course, just landing in bounds is a feat. If you do manage to avoid the drop zone, you are left with a very demanding shot that only the most accurate throws can access. Let's see how it plays out. Macbeth is saying he feels like this is a par five. It is as close to a par five as a par four gets, I feel like. I mean, it average is 4.95 and that's not even that easy for a par 5 no it isn't but the one thing that would make it feel like a par 4 in my eyes would be if that car path on the left was just if it just played safe just the path or the whole hillside too the hillside I, I, just, I don't know I don't know that it needs to play that way but if you if you could just imagine someone throwing 450 feet down the fairway, but then they slide onto the car path, they've got to go back to that drop zone mm -hmm. that we discussed in round one. It's just absolutely awful. I mean, you're 600 feet away from the pin with no angle to the pin. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's why you should throw a good tee shot. As we see Emerson go for a forehand here. Well out of the tunnel, gonna find a little bit of rough, but not bad at all. Yeah, really, even though we've got three safe tee shots, no one's in the position to really attack the pin in two. What if you just played it where you went out of bounds on that left side, instead of coming back, would that be enough, I wonder, to bring the scoring average down? You know, because all the left OBs would have a little bit more hope reaching the, the basket. Oh, where you went out of bounds? Yeah. If, yeah like, I, if you if you don't make it out the tunnel, of yeah. course, go to the drop zone. Ooh, this does get safe. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That is... Wow. Very fortunate. But that might be enough to oh, look at it on the paint. I did not know it was that close. And and that, but that just gives Kevin an opportunity to save the par. And that is a huge break. Yeah, it is. I, I think that that's exactly how it should be played. If you get out the tunnel and you cross the cart path and you should just play from you where you have, out of bounds. have a spotter there and flag mm -hmm. it where it goes out I don't think you'd see as many forehands off the tee I think you'd see a lot more players go for that backhand yeah but a lot of players are playing the forehand just to avoid that cart path and what it does is it puts them down there into the right where Paul and three other guys in this card are where you have almost no chance to be aggressive. Yeah, it's just too tight on the right side the whole way up there to a very tiny tunnel. And Paul's actually, I mean, I, I dare I say, in, in danger of his first bogey. He's got some work to do. He's probably left with 250 still to the pin to, like we, we just talked about, that tiny tunnel. If there was a hole for it, it would be this one. It would be the hardest hole in the course. But he's in a good spot. I mean, if he throws a nice flat shot, he should still 
certainly get himself a putt. And that was an awesome shot from Ricky with a standstill back turn to the basket. It really was. I don't know if he's going to have a look for the birdie, but that was great just to get all the way up there. This looks a little overcooked. Not anymore. <laughs> okay, well, there's going to be a par for Paul. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> that might have been a tough putt, but it bounces right to the basket. Par Macbeth strikes again. Yeah, that was nice. Getting a little love from the the spectators, which has consisted of just players and staff. Essential personnel only, obviously, for this week, as we're in phase one of the Disc Golf Pro Tours protocol for bringing back competition. Or that's uh, phase three, I believe, is actually what we're in. We're in phase three. And phase two is a little bit softer regulations with spectators and caddies. And then phase one is back to normal play with spectators, caddies, and the whole nine. I hope we can get there soon. Yeah, I think we all do. Ricky able to save that par. Unfortunately, didn't quite have a good look for the birdie. And Kevin's ready to go. My goodness. The last thing you need is you make the correction from the previous holes miss and then you hit the pole and come back out that'll make you question any putt from any distance in the next hole pretty impressive all, all pars, pars yeah. for our group there yeah i gotta give a shout out to calvin heinberg chris dickerson thomas gilbert and brian Earhart. the only four birdies on the day wow. that hole was just eating people's lunch in round two and look at our U-Disc leaderboard, Paul McBeth, minus 17, four shots up on Ricky. Our leaders that we're watching staying in those top four spots for now. And Drew Gibson making moves, going from even to six down just in the front nine alone. He is out here to make a case for this title, perhaps. Thank you so much to all our supporters on Patreon and all the fans all over the world. We keep bringing you the coverage. Back nine coming right up.